a very educational Velma. <laughs> now, what did you think of the dancing, Wally Cox? An uncannily effective exhibition of choreography. Yeah, but what did you think of the dancing? <laughs> you know what's getting into kids lately? Why don't you pay more attention, Wally? Oh, excuse me. Hello? Hello? Uh, oh, yes, I can't talk to you now. I have a class here. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. I know I owe you the $25. Yeah, I know. I promised to pay you yesterday. Yeah. Well, look, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what we'll do. Uh, I'll meet you tonight, see? Uh, tonight at uh, 8 o'clock at... Uh... Hello? Hello? <laughs> he must have hung up. Yeah. Uh, now, geography. Now, today, children, in this class, I would like to... Just a minute. Who are you? You're kidding. I said, who are you? I'm Arnold Stang. Who? Arnold Stang. I'm in your class every day. Oh, yes. Yes, I didn't recognize yeah. you. Arnold. <laughs> Arnold? Yeah? You're late. Big news. You were 10 minutes late yesterday, you were 10 minutes late today, and you were 10 minutes late the day before. Yeah? Yeah. I'm holding my own, ain't I? Just for that, I am going to have you recite the poem that I've assigned for today. I'm going to make the punishment fit the rhyme. <laughs> I made a joke. Yeah, well. It must have been before I came in. Take your seat and put your hat away. Now, uh, Amy Stanley, I thought I noticed you were moving your lips. Were you whispering? No, teacher, I was singing. Oh, to yourself? Well, come on out here and sing for all of us. <laughs> such as you find in our Dumont set, it's possible to increase dimension without uh, image disintegration or loss of dis definition. Well, it may be a fact, but it ain't simple. What he means, Professor, is that te uh, Dumont television sets are hot stuff. He did? Certainly. After all, Dumont pioneered the big direct view tubes right from the start. Dumont makes the kind of big tubes that mean not just bigger pictures, but also brighter, sharper pictures. You see what I mean? 
Hot stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Of course, Mr. Delmar. After all, Dumont, uh, Dumont uh, pioneered the uh, direct feed tubes, you know. Mm -hmm. You and see what I mean, Professor? Well, those are hot. Yes. 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 Even yes. today, only Dumont makes a, a giant 20-inch tube. 213 square inches of picture. Now, that's four times as large as the picture you get on most of today's television set. And yeah, you understand? Yeah, you, know, you always have to have a little brain to understand. Yes. And you do have a little brain, don't you, Professor? Oh, well, certainly, Bowers. I, yes. I, no, no, and, I, I... Mr. No? Delmar, yes. even today, I mean, uh, Dumont television receivers all have uh, FM radio as well as television. And that's another sign of Dumont quality. Well, that certainly is very sensational. Uh, I would make some remark now, only I think the best thing we should do is to get back to class. Yes, so go back to your seats, boys. Uh, now, uh, boys and girls, uh, we are going to have philosophy at this time, or uh, character study. Now, I would like you all to... I'm going to emphasize one thing here, and that is that we should all be gentle and considerate and kind. You see, when you talk to people, talk nicely to them. After all, the world, life is like an oyster. Hey, teacher, why is life like an oyster? You shut up. Yes, life is like an oyster. As one philosopher once said, Voulez-vous chemin que pas faisons à ailleurs, c'est la fenêtre? He was a French philosopher. I will illustrate. <coughs> told him to fix that ceiling. Uh, now, as I was saying, <coughs> character study, one of the strong elements in character study is to... Is to... Uh, is, uh, yeah. As, uh, as I started to explain, the important element in a strong character is to have the... <coughs> is to, is to, um, a strong character never lets himself be imposed upon. He is always ready to retaliate. What does that mean, teacher? I will illustrate. Ow! Powers, <laughs> come here. I am keeping you after school. I can't, teacher. I gotta make up with Betty this afternoon. Yes, teacher, I'm mad at him, and I have very good reason to be. Oh, what happened, Betty? Oh, I'll tell you, it's like this. You know, Betty, you're my steady. To that you will agree. And I know you're always ready to sing and dance with me. I thought that I'd surprise her. <laughs> she exploded like a geyser. For instead of just a wee or two, there now were three. The jealousy. You're so right. Yes, there's Kenny and Clara and me. How cozy with Kenny and Clara and me. You should have known better. Wherever did you get her? You should have brought a he instead of she. Yes, it was Betty and Clara and me. How cozy the three of us could be. Artie Shore and Benny Goodman, you can't blame us. Without Clara, <laughs> you wouldn't be as famous. So please, my Betty, don't fret. You're still my very favorite pet. For you know Clara. Yes, I know Clara. Oh, Clara is just my clarinet. Isn't it funny? Again we meet. Yes, isn't it funny? Again we meet. Betty, this is Clara. <laughs> Clara, well, this is better. So while you're making with the feet, you and Clara make with the feet. <laughs>
Kenny, I just, I just love uh, ragtime. Oh, oh, wait, Professor. Yes. You know, it's not called ragtime anymore. No. It's bebop. Oh, bebop. Oh, yes, from the poem. Poem? Yeah, little Miss Bebop, uh, who lost her shebop. Uh, no, no, no. <clears throat> You're all mixed up, Professor. I will illustrate for you. Well, go ahead. Grab your coat, grab your hat, leave your worries on the doorstep. Just direct your feet to the side of the street that's sunny. Can't you hear the little bit of how it's a happy tune at your step? Life can be so sweet. On the side of the street that's sunny, I used to walk and walk and walk in the shade with those blues I'm afraid. But I'm not afraid. This rover cross over, though I didn't have a cent. I'd be rich as Rockefeller. Gold is at my feet on the side of the street that's sunny. your poem? Yeah. Yeah? Well, I mean, yes, teacher, yes. All right, then get out and do it. <clears throat> the Ancient Mariner by Samuel Taylor Coleridge, born 1772, deceased 1834. But I, I don't know when he died. <laughs> Go ahead with your poem. <clears throat> it is an ancient mariner, and uh, he yeah, died. Arnold, and uh, he Arnold, what is an ancient mariner? A mariner? Um, uh, um, a mariner? Mm -hmm. Uh, that's a fellow that marinates herring. No, 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 Arnold, that's wrong. What's wrong about it? Some people happen to like marinated herring. That's why they're a mariner. No, no, Arnold, no, that's not mariner, that's marinator. Oh. Yes, now go on. It is an ancient marinator, and he stops one of three. By the no, look, no, by the no, look, no, by the, no, by no, no, Arnold, not stop. He stop it. Stop it. Yes, sir. What are you dreaming about? It is an ancient mariner, and he stoppeth one of three. But a long gray beard and glaring eye now, wherefore stoppeth thou me? Oh, no, Arnold, <laughs> Arnold, not but, wherefore. Uh, huh? Wherefore? Huh? Wherefore? Wherefore? Err. 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 Down, boy, down. <laughs> no, no, no. Go ahead now, I'm with your poem. Oh, uh, uh, from where, from where I stoppeth? Yes, uh, yes. The, he holds him with his glittering eye. Yeah, the now, way what he is gets, uh, that line there? Now, what does that line mean? He holds him with his glittering eye. He holds him with his eye. He had very long eyelashes. <laughs> the wedding guest stood still and listened like a three-year-old. Yeah, well, what they, does that part mean? Huh? What does he, that part mean? He listened like a three-year-old. He was, uh, maybe, um, listening to Guy Lombardo? No, huh? No. Oh. He looks like a three-year-old. The mariner has his will. Ah, oh, good, Arnold. Yeah. Good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good, huh? yeah, what is that part? What does that mean? Oh, uh, well, this guy, see, um, see this guy, he went home and he, um, made out his will. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> made out his will. What makes you say that? Oh, uh, sure, I mean, um, if, 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 if you was walking along the street and, uh, some guy who marinates her and he comes up to you and he holds you with his long eyelash and he makes you listen to Guy Lombardo. Naturally, you go home and you make out a new will. You know, that's the dopest poem I ever read. <laughs> Arnold, yeah? I'll see you later on the roof. Young man, would you step up, please? What is your name? 
Rudy Cardenas? Rudy Cardenas, huh? Well, don't you know it's rude for you to be playing with those sticks while I'm addressing the class? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Well, since you had such a good excuse, get up here and let the whole class see you doing it. anytime you want to. Uh, now, boys and girls, for our music lesson today, our music period, we're going to devote most of the time to discussing Richard Wagner. I remember when I went to school in Heidelberg. Uh, I had a German professor. I have his picture right here. There he is. Oh, yes, yes. His name was Otto Gergenspiegel. Otto Gergenspiegel. I remember him well. You know, he was the son of a musical mother. And when he was a baby, he looked just like his mother. Well, not exactly. Of course, he looked a little younger, you see. <laughs> And any time he talked about Wagner, why, he used to say, uh, uh, uh men and women, boys and girls. I will talk to Delhi about somebody. Uh, I would like uh, to discuss Wagner now. On uh, the year uh, 1813, that was a very important year in the life of Richard Wagner. He was born. <laughs> 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 and, uh, yeah. And then uh, he was quite a child at that time when he was born. And uh, then he began growing up a little bit. And if it hadn't been for him being born, uh, a lot of people wouldn't have heard of him. <laughs> Hardly somebody at all. And uh, then after that, you know, after he was born, it's so hot these days. After he was born, you see, he went away someplace. And uh, then, but it was a very strange thing about this, uh, this particular boy here. He was, even as a child, he was quite musical. 
Oh, yes, he was, he was very musical. And uh, he used to practice on the drum. All day long, he would practice on the drum. And then when he was five, he did something that the neighbors hoped he wouldn't do. He lifted his dick. <laughs> and uh, then after that, he kept growing upwards all the time and going on with, uh, with his music. And uh, then I believe he, uh, oh yeah, then he wrote a few operas and then he died. Uh, uh, was there any question? Because if there was, you have to stay at the school. Personally, I'm going home. He was a great man, he was a great man. I'll never forget him, although I must admit I've often tried. <laughs> but of course, in order to show you about Wagner, we'll have to illustrate a few things. Now, in order to do this, uh, an, a Wagnerian opera in action, I'll leave two students, Tommy Dix, you come up, and you, Arnold Sang. We're gonna do a scene from Das Rheingold. Now, uh, Tommy, I want you to be Siegfried, yes. and you, Arnold, you'll play the girl from Rheingold. Yeah, hey, I'm, I'm gonna be Miss Rheingold. Wonderful. Yes. No, 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 your name is Brunhilde. I have your uh, costume. Uh, right here. Here, here's name. your costume. No! No, no. Give me a stick, I'll help you kill it. No, it's all, this is what you wear. I you. have to put this on. Yes, go ahead, put it on. Okay, I'll put it on. Yeah, I want to... Hey, hey, you turn out the light. Hey, hey, where'd everybody go, hey? Oh. Brunhilde God. Lovely. Yeah. Oh, good evening, everybody. Yeah, look, look, Arnold, I want you to get ahead with this scene now. Now, I want to explain this to you. See, you are Brunhilde. I'm Brunhilde. You've been, you've been asleep for 20 years. Somebody slipped me a Mickey. Yeah, lie down here now. I lie down now, let me explain it to you. You are Brunhilde. You are very beautiful. Oh, you great big kid. And around you here, around you is a ring of fire. A see? ring of fire? Yes, a ring of fire. And you, Siegfried, you have to break through the ring of fire and come to her and save her. You saved me. What have I got to get to her for? Oh, you got to get to her, you see. She's been asleep, and you've got to break through this, uh, this ring of fire and kiss her, you see, and that'll wake her up. Kiss her? Yes. Yeah. Can I play the part of the fire? No, come on now, Tommy. Brunhilde's waiting. Now hurry up. Okay. Yeah, now come. let's do this thing right come. now. I, you save, save her now. Save okay. me. All right. Oh. What's the matter? This takes nerve, you know. Well, come on now, Tommy. Try it again. Uh, well, come on, everybody. A place I could die waiting to get kissed from you. Yes. Hurry up now. Break <laughs> through the ring. This isn't easy. You know, the fire's getting closer, you know. Yeah. This is hurry new. up. Hurry up now. Getting fight. I'm getting bite. You know something, teacher? What's that? I can't seem to get through this fire. Oh, that's ridiculous, Tommy. Of course you can get through the fire and kiss the beautiful Brunhilde. Now watch. Oh. You know something? You're right. I can't get through that ring of fire either. See what I mean? Yeah, but the most important thing about Wagner is the singing. Arnold, take your seat. Tommy, I want you to do an aria, and then the class will join you as a chorus. I'll be All glad right? to. Arnold, why don't you take your seat? I can't. Why not? I can't get you to fire either. Arnold! All right, now, Tommy, I'll tell you what I want you to do here. I want you to do a scene here, the Goddamn Wrong, the Tornheiser scene from Tristan and Isolde. Well, I'm sorry, but the only thing I've got prepared is buckle down Winsocky. All right, buckle down Winsocky. I'm in no mood to dicker. Okay. Buckle down Winsocky, buckle down. If you knuckle down, if you break the hammock, if you make them break, you can break the hick to buckle down. Make them yell, win stocky, make them yell. You can win, win stocky, if you ring the bell. If you don't give in, take it on the chin, you are bound to win if you will only buckle down. If you fight, you'll chuckle at defeat. If you fight, you'll knuckle off retreat. Knuckle down, win stocky, knuckle down. You can win, win stocky, if you buckle down. If you move them down, if you go to town, you can wear the crown if you will only buckle down. Speaking for teacher Kenny Delmar, class dismissed. I'll see you next week, same time, same channel. Pupils in Kenny Delmar's class were Arnold Stang, Tommy Dix, Betty Ann Nyman, Kenny Bowers, Helene Stanley Jr., Wally Cox, Bill Macheri, and Rudy Cardenas. Schoolhouse was written by Joe Stein and Sidney Resnick. Things and lighting by Firth Ullman.